sheep producers have always had to wait three years or more to determine the individual genetic capabilities of their breeding rams and ewes. That is, until now. Now we have the 50K SNP chip that allows us to, to look at 50,000 50, genes in the individual animal, provides us a bit of a roadmap about what that animal can actually do. And that roadmap is now giving us really good information on uh, how to predict traits of the future. With rapid progress in research and increasing affordability of the technology to apply it, the brave new world of genomics is playing an important role in the selection of breeding stock in the sheep meat and wool industries. Previously, uh, traits like intramuscular fat and eating quality we haven't been able to do on farm or, or it has been very expensive. We're now able to take a single blood sample from an individual animal and that gives us the ability to measure those traits uh, that are, have been uh, very difficult in time. Innovative Gundawindi sheep breeders Mark and Vicky Murphy's main goal is to breed more productive and profitable dual purpose merinos. Their participation in the Sheep Genomics Cooperative Research Centre pilot project is contributing to the development of new sheep breeding values or RBVs to boost the speed and accuracy of carcass and wool production traits, enabling them to achieve their aims in the face of conventional wisdom. Um, for us, we wanted to be the leader of the pack, um, be out there in the front showing people that using the information that is available, you can make a difference to profitability. And I think the industry thinks, or the section of the industry thinks, that if you wanted to become a bit dual purple, or you wanted to become more carcassy for the merino, you, there was trade-offs on the wool side. The simple fact is there's not. Data from the Murphy's flock is used with Merino Select to rank size for production characteristics and is helping to restock ewe numbers across the country. We've put a lot of emphasis on, on uh, worms, on, on uh, we've, we've, you know, summer rainfall is a major barbers pole problem. And um, there's a genetic link between eye muscle and, and worm resistance or worm resilience. Um, we've just been able to zero right in and, and um, fully utilise that genetic potential now. So we've got to be competitive with the Prime Minister, Ministry and it's not hard to get your sheep up and going genetically much faster and have them, you know, finished at 10, 11 months of age with a really nice fleece of wool in the bale and be competitive in the prime lamb market. So, and most of our clients that I know of got the equivalent of first cross lamb prices last year. Further south, Debbie and Steve Milne are leading the push with White Suffix in the genomics pilot project. Steve and I run a White Suffix stud here at Branks Home in Victoria. Um, we join about 150 ewes a year. We're in high rainfall country, 26 inch rainfall, pretty secure country down in the Western District of Victoria. Debbie and Steve have researched breeding values on three young rams, the DNA of which was scanned 12 months ago. And that's number... That's 782. One of them was particularly good on the eating quality traits of sheer force and intramuscular fat. So he and his progeny are already earmarked as providers of high quality eating lamb to consumers. We're in a, in a situation in the terminal sire industry where we already have a, a great deal of information on an animal by the time they're six months of age. What it is going to boost is it's these hard to measure traits that we can't, that we don't measure at the moment and we can't measure. Genomics have enabled this to happen within a short time frame rather than waiting for slaughter. I mean, it's, it's becoming fairly obvious that um, a lot of the productive traits in sheep and a lot of these traits that uh, um, affect the bottom line for producers are, are governed by not one large gene but a number of small genes of small effect. So, you know, the g genomics is going to need wheedle them out and, and, and we will make huge gains in all those sort of traits. For seed stock producers like the Murphys and the Milnes, the process that results in accurate breeding value predictions for traits like adult fleece weight, lean meat yield and intramuscular fat begins virtually as soon as a lamb hits the ground. Dr Ben Hayes at DPI in Victoria is an enthusiastic pioneer in genomics research. First thing that happens, the ear punch, for example, comes into the lab first thing we have to do is extract the DNA out of that ear punch. So we do that in small tubes and you, you take the DNA across these SNP chips and what that does, it tells you 
the DNA sequence of each lamb, for example, at 50,000 points along the genome. The data itself isn't particularly useful. It's the comparison with a database created from trial flocks that makes it so valuable to producers. What we're doing now is we're using these 50,000 markers across the genome to actually track those thousands of genes that go up to make the genetic merit of a ram for a trait like lean meat yield. Eight years after the completed mapping of the human genome, commercialisation of genomics technology in the Australian meat and wool industry is becoming a reality. So, the, for example, the cost of getting a single bit of DNA marker information, that's gone down by more than a thousand times. Back on the property, the race to develop higher quality consumer products is heating up.